DiscerningHearts.com presents Building a Kingdom of Love with Monsignor John Essif. Monsignor Essif is a priest of the Diocese of Scranton, Pennsylvania. He has served as a retreat director and confessor to St. Mother Teresa. He continues to offer direction and retreats for the Sisters of the Missionaries of Charity. Monsignor Essif encountered St. Padre Pio, who became a spiritual father to him. He has lived in areas around the world, serving in the pontifical missions, a Catholic organization established by St. John Paul II to bring the good news to the world, especially the poor. He continues to serve as a retreat leader and director to bishops, priests, sisters, and seminarians, and other religious leaders. Building a Kingdom of Love, Reflections with Monsignor John Essif. I'm your host, Chris McGregor. Can you see the stars when you look out your window? I can see them here. It's been a beautiful, and when the clouds aren't in the way, you really see the stars. And a star is a a marvelous symbol. The word epiphany means the manifestation. And God was showing his son to the world. And today the epiphany, he reveals Jesus to the Gentiles. The anointed one, the king, Messiah, that's what it means. David was anointed as king. Saul before him then David, then Solomon. But the anointed one was Jesus. He was to be the savior of the world, and he was longed for and looked for by the prophets. And all of that lineage, now that he comes, who did he come for? Just the Jews? No. Right from birth, he's going to reveal himself to the Gentiles. Who were the Gentiles? They were the nations, all nations. The Savior was going to come not just for the Jews, but he was going to come for every nation. And so these three kings are representative of the nations, and they follow a star. God leads them, Father leads them to his Son so that now they will bring him their gifts. This has been predicted by the prophet. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick clouds the people. But upon you, The Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look all about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow, for the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you, dromedaries from Midian and Epha, all from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. So long before the child appeared, it was predicted that there would becoming kings from all over to Jerusalem. And here now they're coming. And today is the feast of what we call Epiphany. And Epiphany is the manifestation of Jesus, not only to the Jews, they were represented by the shepherds, but also to the Gentiles, to the nations. And usually if you have 
in your nativity sets, there will be camels and dromedaries carrying their gifts. And these three kings are coming, as it is show, told in the, the Gospel of Matthew. I'll, I'll just read that because it's so important for the story. So many of us don't get this story. What is the meaning of Epiphany for us today? When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem. Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. See, King Herod was a fake king, and he really wasn't even a, a very good Jew, but he was there because he had his ambition as his father before him, used by the Romans. Assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ, which means Messiah, or where the king uh, was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. So that the, the king who is to come is going to be born in Bethlehem because he is of David's stock, and that was the birthplace of David. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. Of course, his intent was to kill the child. After their audience with the king, they set out, and behold the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another route. The three kings are representative of three different nations. Usually Iraq, Persia, and Ethiopia would be the modern countries for which they came. The meaning of this for us today, what is it that brought people to Christ? That is you and me. Because epiphany means the manifestation, the revelation. Paul, in today's Mass, is making clear what this particular feast is about. Brothers and sisters, he has in his letter to the Ephesians, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations, as it has now been revealed, to his holy apostles and prophets by the Holy Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Gentiles now, in the Acts of the Apostles, the teaching of the church, that 
he, the first converts brought into the church were Jews. They were all Jews. They were from different places. But then it, they began to see that in, in that early stages of the church, that the Holy Spirit was manifesting himself to the Gentiles. And in the Acts of the Apostles, Peter and Paul, but especially Paul, were going out to the nations, to the Gentiles, to baptize them. And so the salvation comes through, with, and in Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit, God, picks those who are to be saved. We we don't pick him. He picks us. And as the Spirit went, he came into the world, and the church began to blossom and go all over the world. It mainly came in that first century to the West, to Rome, to Spain, to Europe. And so that those first centuries, it was to the Greeks and to the, to the Romans and to that empire. Now, it's actually because the Gentiles are the manifestation, the revelation of Jesus to the whole world. I think the epiphany means if Jesus is going to be manifested in our day, it's going to happen through you. It was through Paul. It was through Peter in the early church. That was the manifestation to the Gentiles. They got to know Jesus through the star. The radiance of the light that shines Where is it shining today? It's shining in you and in me. Christ, who is to be manifested, is going to manifest himself through you and through me. And so are you radiating Christ in your life and by your actions? Do people see Christ in you? Do they see Christ in me? The star, the radiance, the light comes through me and my action. If people are going to find Christ in our society, it's going to be revealed to them through my actions, through my words, through my example. And so, He wants to be revealed. We'll return to Building the Kingdom of Love with Monsignor John Nesset in just a moment. Did you know that you can obtain a free app which contains all your favorite Discerning Hearts programs? Father Timothy Gallagher, Dr. Anthony Lillis, Archbishop George Lucas, Father Mauritius Fildi, and so many more, including episodes from Inside the Pages, can be obtained on the Discerning Hearts free app. This also includes all the novenas and devotionals and prayers, including the Holy Rosary and Stations of the Cross, the Chaplet of St. Michael, and the Seven Sorrows of Our Lady, all available on the Discerning Hearts free app. Visit the iTunes and Google Play app stores to obtain your free Discerning Hearts app today. A Prayer for the Holy Souls in Purgatory by St. Gertrude the Great Eternal Father, I offer you the most precious blood of thy divine Son, Jesus and union with the Masses said throughout the world today. For all the souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners in the Universal Church, for those in my home and in my family. Amen.
Hello, my name is Deacon Omar Gutierrez, and I want to ask you to support Discerning Hearts in a special way. We, Chris McGregor, the board, and I all know that not everyone listening can help financially. We know we have listeners from all parts of the world, and we have made a commitment since the beginning to make the truths shared through Discerning Hearts totally free. So while you may not be able to contribute financially, what you can do is certainly pray, but also give us positive reviews on whatever platform you use to listen to us. If it's iTunes, Android, Stitcher, Spotify, however it is that you get these podcasts, or if you're on YouTube and you like our videos, please give us a good rating and write a review. The more good ratings and reviews we get, the higher our profile, and the more listeners will discover us, listeners who may have the means to contribute in the future. Please consider rating us and writing a positive review today. We now return to Building the Kingdom of Love with Monsignor John Essa. When Jesus wanted to manifest himself to the Native Americans, he is radiating through Kateri Tekawitha, the modern radiance of a saint was through this Mohawk girl. If you're on a reservation and you are a young girl, just like he used Kathari Tekawitha to radiate Christ to the Mohawks, who became the lily of the Mohawks, so you can radiate Christ. If you're a young Mexican-American living here in California or Arizona or Texas or wherever. Juan Diego was very hidden, but he became a saint. He's now Saint Juan Diego in his love for Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe because of his example in humility and simplicity. He radiated Jesus. He was a star. When John Neumann came as a bishop to Philadelphia, he became a radiant star, attracting by his life, by his teaching, by his love, by his humility, by his simplicity. He was a star. And he radiated Christ in his time and in his age. And so we of the 21st century, we need people in our day who are going to radiate Christ. I learned about Jesus. Yes, I learned about him from catechism and I learned about him from going to school. But the one who radiated Christ to me was my grandfather. He was a real star. His simplicity, his love, his humility, his teaching, his life was like a radiance. And so being around him, I was just drawn to whom? To Jesus. When we have the Feast of the Epiphany, that which draws us to Christ is the radiance that shines as a light through those around us. When I was a little boy growing up, it was my mother, as I remember getting up at 2, 2 2.30 in the morning, maybe, to go to the bathroom, I would see my mother on her knees. My mother always, that I remember, loved Jesus and loved us and loved everyone that I remember. She radiated Christ in a very simple, humble way to her five children, to the people in our parish. She really wasn't anyone who had gone out and done a lot of extraordinary things, but her in her ordinary way, in her simplicity, Christ was there. And people still talk about her, the love that she had through her cooking, 
through her care, through her prayer, through her life. When I was in my first parish, I had a, a man that I met there. His name was Ed Gunnels. He used to serve Mass, and he had seven children. And he was the most magnificent, wonderful example. And as he grew, the older he got, the more radiant he became. For years and years, he was a really a man's man, as they say. But he was such an example of joy, of peace, of love, of wisdom. And he got more and more radiant as his life went on. I never met another family of, uh, they had 10 children. And it was Wilson McIntyre was the father of those children and his wife, Christine. And Ed's wife was Virginia. Their example in that family, those families in that parish, and you would just see them coming and be aware that here were examples and lights to people. Are you manifesting Jesus where you are? The, the priests that I have known, so many of them, you know, they're, they're, they can be functionary and, and they can do their duty, but they don't leave you with that, that radiance, that example, it, it, that you see someone doing a duty and you see someone going through motions, but the radiance and the power that just comes through their example to be with them is to see holiness pouring out on, on so many people around them. And so as, as I was growing up, I remember searching and looking and when I met Mother Teresa, it's like a radiance, a light, an attraction, a power. When I met Father Cluthers, the first martyr that I met, I just can't get beyond the example, the power, the witnessing. He brought me Jesus. I know Jesus better because of Father Nicholas Cluthers. Every one of us is called on the Feast of the Epiphany to be a manifestation of Jesus. My sister May Ann was just so beautiful. One time I got a heart attack and I was in the hospital very soon after my ordination. And when my mother and father came to see me, she was with them. And she heard the doctor say that I could die. Shortly after that, she got a, a disease, blood cancer. She died three years later. But about a week before she died on her birthday, I was with her. Her birthday was June the 24th. And she told me she would die on June the 29th, which is St. Peter's Feast. But before she died, she said, do you remember when you had your heart attack? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, well, I heard the doctors say you could die. And when I heard that, I came down to St. Anthony's Church and I knelt before Jesus. And I said to Jesus, Jesus my brother's life is important. Mine isn't. Take my life and give him his. That was over 55 years ago that she said that to God. I've never had a problem with my heart since. I don't know if God does things that way. Take one life for another. I've never allowed anyone that I know to pray that way. But in her prayer, in her love, 
she was Jesus. I told her that she was Jesus. And she really was. You see, Jesus said to you and to me, I lay down my life for you. But I met Jesus in a young girl, 15, who loved me so much she would die for me. You see, we know Jesus through people. He manifests himself through us. I learned him through a 15-year-old girl, my sister, who would love me enough to die for me. Jesus lives in us, dies in us, rises in us, and wants to manifest himself through us today. Epiphany is the radiation of Christ through us. We had to radiate him to the nations, to everyone we meet, if every baptized, confirmed, an ordained Christian would reveal the light that is in them, we would light up the whole world today. Jesus is a light. He has come into the world. And the prediction of Isaiah is true. Rise up in splendor. You are the new Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick clouds the people. But upon you the Lord shines and over you appears his glory today. So let the light shine through you that the world may know Jesus Christ today. What a great feast this is, the Feast of Epiphany, the manifestation of Christ to the whole world through us and with us and in us. Be a star. Be a star in, in the church. Be a star and shine wherever you may be. God has chosen you to be a light to the nations. If you're listening to me in Australia, be a star. If you're listening to me in Canada, be a star. Si usted, si usted está escuchando hoy día en América Latina, tiene que ser una estrella en la iglesia. No matter where you are, radiate and shine and show forth Christ to the earth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You've been listening to Building the Kingdom of Love with Monsignor John Essif. To hear and or to download this episode, along with hundreds of other spiritual formation programs, visit Discerning Hearts. Com. This has been a production of Discerning Hearts. I'm your host, Chris McGregor. We hope that if this has been helpful for you, that you will first pray for our mission. And if you feel us worthy, consider a charitable donation, which is fully tax deductible to help support our efforts. But most of all, we hope that you will tell a friend about DiscerningHearts.com and join us next time for Building a Kingdom of Love, Reflections, with Monsignor John Essef.